see on this model how they are what all stacked up okay and now we can see that there are transverse processes coming out on the side spinous process down the back the spinal cord going through the vertebral foramen the spinal nerves coming out through the intervertebral foramen this is this is wonderful you are fearfully and wonderfully made now we're going to start looking at specific types of vertebrae this vertebrae right here is called a uh, atlas remember who atlas was atlas holds up the world this atlas holds up the skull okay okay and you have um, you can tell tell the atlas because of a, a number of reasons okay um, it has no um, body see the typical vertebrae that we just looked at the first thing we pointed out is that it has a body okay this one has no body there's an old song, I Ain't Got No Body, and that's the song that the Atlas sings, I Ain't Got No Body. Okay. The other thing is it has incredibly large, incredibly large, superior articulating facets. See? And th th remember, those are the, I think these are, this is the superior ones, had it turned around. Superior articulating facets. It also has big inferior articulating facets. Okay. The other way that you can tell it is it's got no body. It's got big. Oh, let me let me make a comment on the superior articulating facets. The next video is going to be about the skull, and at the base of the skull there are big articulating facets that, that touch, that come together with the superior articulating facets. Okay. The other thing about this is that it's got a foramen on the side. The other vertebrae do not have foramen on the side. These are called, see there's one on each side. These are called transverse foramen. This is the only vertebrae that has transverse foramen. So, no body, big superior articulating facets, and transverse foramen characterize the atlas, which holds up the skull. See, so atlas held up the world, and the and the biggest, heaviest part of your body is 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 your head. So it's holding up your head. It's very important for that job to be done. And that's done by the atlas. Okay, the next vertebrae in our parade of vertebrae is called the 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 dens, D-E-N-S. Okay, and it's a cervical vertebrae number two. Both of these are cervical vertebrae because they're they're in your neck. Okay, they're in your neck. And if you if you look at this, the prominent uh, superior uh, projection is called the dens and that fits into the atlas and allows the skull to move, move around both this way rotationally both forward and backward motion you know you can move your your head around like that okay so that is cervical vertebrae number two. You notice the articulating facets are very big on it. That's the superior articulating facets. And then we've got the inferior articulating facets. So that's cervical vertebrae number two, which is the, uh, which is the, uh, the uh, axis. I don't know whether I said that. This is... I was so excited to tell you about the dens, I forgot to tell you the name of the vertebrae, cervical vertebrae number two, 
is called the dance the dance okay then we come down to the next vertebrae in line is the thoracic vertebrae and the first thing I notice about the thoracic vertebrae it's getting a little larger but it's very characteristic of the fact that it has these large, large transverse processes. Do you see how big they are? I used a, a uh, for a typical vertebrae, if they use a thoracic vertebrae, because you can really see the transverse processes. This, of course, on the top is the, what? The spinous process. This is what the vertebral foramen this is the body, the superior articulating facets, and then turn it around, you can see the inferior articulating facets. So there, there you go, that's a thoracic vertebrae, and it articulates with the ribs. And again, how many places does, we're gonna look, well, let's, well, it's hard to know whether to do this right now. Let's let's do the ribs and then come back to the vertebrae. Okay. The ribs, the ribs, there's 12 ribs on each side. There's two floating ribs, if you remember. Okay. And this one right here is a floating rib. It's a smaller rib. Okay. And it has what? A sternal end and a vertebral end. Only this vertebral end doesn't go to the sternum because it's a floating rib. Right here, let's look at a little bit bigger of a rib. Look at the angle on that. That's because of the shape of the chest cavity. Okay. Uh, if you look at this now, here is the sternal end. See? Goes into the rib. Remember, it doesn't go directly into the sternum, it what? It goes by cartilage. Costal cartilage is right there that takes the sternal end into the, in, into the, uh, into the sternum, okay? Here is what would be called the vertebral end, and the vertebral end articulates, remember we saw this in the first video, it articulates with th three places for stability. See this bump right here? That is a, um, a rib uh, tuberosity, okay? It's a pretty big bump. And that's gonna articulate, see? It's gonna connect to the transverse process. That's why the transverse processes are so big of the uh, 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 of the uh, thoracic vertebrae. And then it also is going to articulate two places with the body of the thoracic vertebrae. So to be stable, it articulates in two places on the body and one place on the transverse process. Look at the angle of that. And then look at how big this, this guy is. Wow. Compare the size of that to the size of the smaller rib. I don't know if I can get them both on there at the same time. So the size of the ribs really vary, and there's 12 on each side, remember that, and 10 of them connect to the sternum by way of the uh, cartilage, the costal cartilage, and then two of them are floating ribs. So let's get back to our parade of vertebrae. We only have one more to go, and then we'll review them all. Okay. This is the what? This is the lumbar vertebrae, the biggest one of all. Okay. And again, just review anatomy. That's the body. That's the vertebral foramen. That's the spinous process. Look at this. There's, there's two ways you can tell a lumbar vertebrae from a cervical vertebrae. And remember, the vertebrae get, what, bigger as they go down. So if you could compare, whoops, drop that guy. The vertebrae, the body is getting bigger on the lumbar vertebrae, okay? 
The other thing you'll notice, if I can turn them sideways, look how big that spinous, how long that spinous process is. And the spinous process on the lumbar vertebrae is getting much, much uh, reduced. And the other thing you can tell is that the transverse process is longer because it articulates with the ribs than, than the transverse process on the lumbar vertebrae. And then finally we come down to the fifth. Remember there's seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae, five lumbar vertebrae, and then it comes down to this. This is the sacrum. The sacrum is made up of five fused bones, okay, and it ends, we couldn't see it on the previous video because it was broken off, but this is your tailbone or your coccyx. This is your coccyx. And you can see on this model how the lumbar vertebrae, there's five of them, come down to join with the, with the sacrum. And then finally you can see on this model too, Here's the little coccyx or the tailbone. So let's review the different kinds of, let's, let's review everything real, real quickly, okay? This is, what kind of vertebrae is this? It's a thoracic vertebrae. You can tell it by the long transverse processes and the side, okay? What you call the stick, this, this is the body of the vertebrae, that's the vertebral foramen that the spinal cord goes through, then three processes, two transverse processes, and a spinous process, okay, and then there's the arch of that vertebral foramen, the top part is called the lamina, lamina, and the bottom part is called the pedicle, okay. And then it has what? Two superior articulating processes right there. See, one, two. And then it has two inferior articulating processes. One, two. Okay. And so then the other thing is the nerves come out through the intervertebral foramen. And this is articulating cartilage. Okay. Now let's let's go through the different kinds. The cervical vertebrae number one is called the what? The uh, the atlas, and it articulates with the skull, the occipital condyles, which you'll see in another video. It also has a big transverse foramen on it, and no body, and so that's how you can tell it. Cervical vertebrae number two, you can tell it's a very obvious one. It's called the at, at, axis. Yeah, axis. The first one's the atlas, the second one is the axis, and this has uh, superior dens. And that, that's so that the, you can move your, your, your skull, your head forward and backward, and move it from side to side. Okay? And uh, so it has a body, the dens is coming out of the body, but it's a very reduced body, okay? Then we come to the thoracic vertebrae. The way you can tell this is it has very, a very big spinous process, and the transverse processes are big because it articulates with the ribs. And then going down, then you'll come to the lumbar vertebrae and it has an enormous body okay and it also then has a reduced spinous process as compared to the thoracic vertebrae and then finally the last the fifth lumbar vertebrae articulates with the sacrum which is five fused bones and the last bone on it is called the coccyx so I hope this helps you to understand the vertebrae structure. Oh, one more thing, the rib. 
The rib is what? It has the the sternal end which goes to cartilage except for uh, ribs 11 and 12, the two floating ribs, by cartilage to the sternum, okay? Then we have this big tubercle, okay? And that big tubercle, almost a tuberosity, uh, it, it articulates with the transverse process of the uh, thoracic vertebrae, and then you have, this is the vertebral end of the rib, and it articulates two places with the body of the thoracic vertebrae. So hope this helps you with the, with the uh, understanding the different kinds of vertebrae.